Analysis. What starts out as the most notoriously difficult first year course ends up being clowned on in third year by those taking the likes of algebraic geometry. So what happens in those three years? And is there really anything more to it than just the triangle inequality? Well, this video will explore the path of an analyst at seven levels up to PhD. And at the end, I'll give you a test to figure out what level you're at. Likely, you've heard me say before that this was my first mathematical love. I was drawn in by its difficulty and notoriety for being a slap in the face to fresh starry-eyed undergrads. It's all really based around one idea, and that idea is arbitrary closeness. I've spent so long thinking about this concept for all epsilon greater than zero. It captures something powerful, but early on it's really hard to think about. Indeed, it took mathematicians ages to pinpoint this and turn their intuition into a rigorous definition. Really, everything here is based around arbitrary closeness. Sequences, limits, continuity, differentiation, integration. This idea is what allows you to make all of this rigorous. But then you realise that actually there's something hidden here, which is that closeness means that we are implicitly assuming a way to measure distance. And as mathematicians do, you then ask yourself, what is the minimal set of rules a function must have to capture a sensible notion of distance? Your next course in analysis will then likely start with defining these rules of a distance function. Now the triangle inequality is an axiom, and at least for me, you're probably still visualising everything as balls in 3D space. Until you meet examples like the discrete metric or the piadic metric, and now these give open balls that challenge your mental picture. It's clear that this minimal set of rules has really widened the class of situations you're thinking about, and you start using this open ball structure coming from the distance function to get some control on how the space can interact with continuous functions on it or sequences in it. But after getting more comfortable handling strange, unfamiliar situations, you realise that, or much more likely you are reminded, that back at level one, there were strange situations you met of functions you couldn't integrate, but were still in the course for some reason. And now you find yourself in a course on measure theory. Intuitively, measuring subsets of the real line is obvious, until someone points out to you that you want the measure of the sum of finitely many disjoint subsets to just be the sum of their measures. And again, intuitively that shouldn't concern you for the real line. Until you read that, by considering quotients of the real line by the rationals, along with the axiom of choice, you can indeed find a finite collection that violates this. So, you now define another set of rules as to what subsets you'll allow to be considered to be measured. But the rules you define still allow for a lot of complicated sets, and so this in turn leads to being able to define a new method of integration, the Lebesgue integral, that can handle bad behaviour of functions on complicated sets that the Riemann integral you met back at level 1 can't. So at this point it's becoming obvious that functions, how they can be integrated, and how limits of them interact with integrals, is important to study. And this requires a notion of distance between functions, which gives rise to a norm. You also notice that the kinds of classes of functions you want to consider form a vector space, and so they have additional structure. But because our human brains really can't think about infinite dimensional space, you start in an easier setting of studying sequence spaces with norms that are similar to what you'll end up putting on functions. In all these spaces, the main player that you care about is completeness of the space with respect to the norm. And then you spend most of the course showing that complete and linear is ridiculously nice in terms of its structure and mappings between such spaces. Now this can really come at any point after the first level, but I think that you really appreciate the theory of complex analysis after you've had some exposure to bad behaviour in different settings. What starts out as seemingly just the same definition of differentiable, it is then drilled into you just how rigid complex differentiable functions are. For example, you see that if two holomorphic functions agree on a tiny line, then they have to be the same function on that connected domain. And it's this rigidity that gives you so many nice results, but to me, this course feels a bit like a self-indulgent sidestep in the undergrad track of analysis. But later down the line, you'll tie this course to geometry if you study Riemann surfaces. Once you've finished up level four, studying complete linear function spaces, you'll be thinking, that's nice, but who cares? Where do we go from here? Well, to be honest, this is where I tap out so far in my journey. But as best as I can tell from my position, next is PDE and harmonic analysis. Most things in the real world are modelled by functions of multiple variables, like heat, 
and the classical methods to solve the PDEs that model them often require conditions on the function that a lot of the actual solutions to these don't satisfy. And so you look to linear function spaces. Sobolev spaces are complete spaces and the norm, the way of giving functions in the space a size, at the same time has a component capturing the size of the function's weak derivative, which is an extension of the classical derivative to distributions. And then working in this complete function space, you can prove existence and uniqueness results or solutions to PDEs. Now of course PhD level analysis encompasses a lot but a big part of it is extending the study of PDEs from level 6 and studying spectral theory of operators on these function spaces. Now I did a bit of this in my course back at level 4 but now it looks like you develop a real sophisticated arsenal of techniques and theory to handle things like non-linear PDEs and so that is the path of an analyst. If you want to really test your understanding at each level or learn a couple more, then you can build any interactive course you want on MathHub. I'll start getting back to mentor applicants tomorrow. The world of education is about to wake up.